welcome to another episode of Taking Stock. This is the show where we prepare you for the coming week and we analyze the week gone by. I'm Sonia and with me as always is Anuj. Uh, it's been a difficult week for the market. In fact, it was quite a difficult series. The market went home with a loss of 3.5 uh, to 4% in the series gone by. And even in the week, although it was a truncated week, the Nifty went, went home with a loss of about 1.5%. We saw big losers in the form of ITC, HDFC, HUL, ONGC, a lot of blue chip names selling off quite a bit. Uh, Anuj, um, a disappointing uh, a series for us. Uh, do you get a sense that there could be more to come in the May series? Uh, uh, yes, Sonia, indeed. You know, and I'll tell you something. This series was actually divided in two halves. When the series started, we started from the March lows and the market had a 500 point rally. The sense was that the, you know, the earnings have been baked in. Mm -hmm. But when we had the actual earnings transformation and the fact that top line growth was absent in most of the companies, uh, that's what hit the market in the second half of the series. So that's why for the series we were only down about one and a half, two percent, but we moved 1100 points. First 500 points on the way up and then 600 points on the way down. And you know, uh, we'll get to our guests in a bit to uh, to ask them, you know, what their own uh, prognosis for the market is. But my own sense is that maybe another one to two percent is easily left in the index and some more panic lows in the mid caps before the market bottoms out. Alright, uh, well it is a long weekend so uh, I'm sure a lot of our uh, traders and experts are enjoying their weekend but let's try and uh, you know break this down a little bit. We have two guests who join in. We have Dipen Shet of HTFC Securities and Anu Jain of IFL uh, Private Wealth Management who joins in uh, to our discussion. So uh, Dipen, let me start off with you. Uh, difficult week for the market but um, perhaps this is the best buying opportunity for retail investors. What advice are you giving your clients? Yes, absolutely. Um, Sonia, I'd say that uh, the stall that you can see right now is one in a series of many more stalls that will come, but the bigger trend is obviously upwards. Um, we are clearly in a structural change. Uh, the economy is in a structural change. The country at a broader level, not just from a macroeconomic perspective, but uh, from a much broader perspective, is uh, in the throes of a structural change, no doubt triggered by the arrival of the not-so-new government mm -hmm. now. Um, and I think this is going to take as much as a decade to flower out completely. But uh, if you're going to expect fireworks uh, every quarterly season, mm -hmm. earning season, then I think you're kind of uh, stretching your imagination a bit too much and countries take time to reform, countries take time to steer around. Uh, this was clearly a country which was in some kind of sclerosis or the pessimists would call it cancer. So the chemotherapy is not going to be very um, enjoyable for a while and I don't know whether this is chemotherapy or not but um, we will see a slow and steady upward grind which will be accentuated or punctuated shall we say by occasional uh, hiccups. So if there's a hiccup it's going to give you a chance to buy. Yes you should buy. Okay. Yeah, that's quite a morbid analogy <laughs> chemotherapy, sclerosis. <laughs> People are not going to be too happy listening <laughs> to that. <laughs> Indeed but depend uh, you know the old adage is sell in May and go away. This time around, could it be the other way, you know, buy in May and go away? Are we there? So people have been ahead of the curve and they've been selling in April, not just May. Uh, so in May, sorry for saying this, they may sell, but uh, I don't think they should. Uh, I think uh, what's happening right now is that uh, we, we are, there's a little bit of a question mark around whether uh, the good days or Achhe Din are going to come as fast as they will. There is no, as yet, there is no evidence that they won't. Uh, but the kind of incremental milestone kind of evidence that we were looking for is a little elusive. And uh, so people whose faith was a little weaker uh, seem to feel that their faith is shaken and they've been selling. I'm okay with that. Uh, it gives uh, it gives the long-term believers an opportunity to re-enter if they spend too much time in analyzing and missed out on the chance to buy. Um, I don't think we should look uh, read too much into corporate earnings and mm. uh, look at how much percentage year on year top lines or bottom lines have changed. So long as the thesis on a company doesn't change, on a business doesn't change, I don't think we should get too bugged at what's happening. All right, uh, Anu Jain is also with us. Uh, anu, hi, good to have you on the show. What's your sense? I mean, the, the, the Nifty spent the last two or three days uh, trading below the 200 day moving average. Is that an important? you know important barometer or would you say that just another mark and the market would go back and trade above that uh, how do you sense the nifty's move over the next say two or three weeks given the fact uh, that if you were staying below this uh, you know eight 
uh, 2508-260 levels, uh, you are actually opening the doors for about 7960, close to 8000 levels, just sub 8000 levels. Uh, however, I'm in no way saying that that's coming like the way we've been seeing 50 down, 100 down on a daily basis. Markets are extremely oversold. You can probably first have a pullback closer to 8320 to 8380, anywhere in that zone, where market will reconsider, you know, whether it needs to uh, stay over this 200-day moving average. So yes, it's classically a negative sign, but I think being oversold, uh, you are overdue for a rally back to uh, about 83.50. Okay, so overdue for a rally back to 83.50. Anu, hi, welcome to the show. You know, a lot of blue chip names sold off uh, last week. ITC was down 7%, ONGC was down 4%, HDFC was down 5%. Uh, for a slightly medium term um, a trader or investor, would you recommend buying into any of these names? Well, ONGC, ITC, definitely no. Uh, the charts patterns are pretty much eroded to an extent that, uh, you know, ITC can test closer to even 300 to 95 if this trend were to extend, if I'm saying that market can, has the possibility of going back to below 8,000, then this, these two stocks will definitely not withstand that pressure. HDFC on lower levels, possibly yes, but they are much better stocks which would probably give you the opportunity, stocks which have correct. So in the banking sector itself, you'll get probably opportunities better than HDFC. So probably a Kotak, if it was to correct to say about 1316, where it's kind of corrected earlier before. Also, there's been some news factor for which it's been doing so. So probably that looks good at those prices. Uh, maybe even... Uh, I see, I see if it corrects back to about 310, 311. But within the whole sector, banking is now looking to be slightly more resilient, whereas the others have broken the 200-day moving average. Despite a poor ICICI result, a good access result, the indice is now closer to its 20-day moving average. So if I were to really look at levels, then probably 100 points up where the 20-day moving average for the bank Nifty is, there is some resistance. But if it gives a pullback, that could probably be the strongest sector right now. We We've seen access move up like consistently over the last two days post the result. That could continue for other stocks as well. So I would be a little more hopeful on the bank nifty at this stage technically. All right. Uh, uh, Deepan, let's talk about some stocks then. And, you know, I'm just going through your uh, uh, mid-cap portfolio. Uh, and I, I want to discuss mid-cap IT because you have one of them in your portfolio, KPIT Tech, which had a crunching fall over the last two days. Uh, uh, for, you know, I know it's a brutal reminder to what can happen to some of these mid-caps, but right. are, are you keeping the faith in mid-cap IT story and some of these names like KPIT? Certainly, KPIT's uh, numbers would seem to indicate that something has broken down. Um, the question is to identify what has broken down and how seriously. So the other stock, for example, that we have from Midcap IT is, is in a completely different class of its own, which is e clubs which has a very different business model from the normal Midcap IT companies and very high profit, uh, very high margin business, a very unique and uh, niche positioning. But uh, insofar as KPIT is concerned, you have to, so they have roughly two different parts of the business in terms of flavor. One is more of the business applications and traditional IT services which actually houses three different divisions of the company. There is an SAP practice, there is an enterprise practice and then there is an Oracle practice. Uh, the other part of their business, which is about one third of revenues, or uh, slightly less than that, is uh, the, the 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 tech services or the product engineering services that they provide to the auto industry. Now that part of the business is surprise is very very resilient. In fact, the largest customer there, which is uh, Cummins, uh, revenues from Cummins are flat. But the rest of the business has grown some 30-40% over the year. So that part of the business has absolutely no complaint. It's the bread and butter IT services business, which is what is really the worry for even the larger IT companies, which okay. is causing a problem. And there was a very strong degrowth in one particular account the last in the last quarter, which was accompanied by a ramp up of costs and investments in people and so on. So operating deleverage played out. I think at at the current price, uh, it's it's just about what I would say about 2,000 crores <coughs> market cap or thereabouts. Uh, it it uh, at at 100. 
105 rupees or so. It looks very, very attractive in terms of trying to figure out what's really happening and taking a long-term view on things. Mm -hmm. Remember that you really make big money in equities when the going looks very bad for good people. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt to my mind that KPIT is run by a very competent bunch of people and a no, great set of The problem I think with KPIT was also that they guide last quarter. They, they had said that their, um, you know, their uh, growth would be flat this quarter and they would only be cross-currency right. headwinds, right. but right. this time they actually de-grew. De -de so uh, there's a bit of a confidence crisis as well. Yes, though. there is. Yes, there is. So and why do you think the stock is halved? But so would that not worry me. you? So we are going to dig deeper and I don't think uh, just the, the, the proceeds of the con call are going to be enough for us to firm up our view. And we will certainly take a much deeper look at this one. I suspect that something has gone wrong and I'm hoping that something, that something which has gone wrong is actually curable. And if it is, then there's great value at this price. If it isn't, then we are in trouble. Sure. Okay, uh, we'll discuss all of this and more. We need to slip into a short break. We'll come back and chat about lots more stocks on Taking Stock. But in the meantime, let's listen in to some market opinion that we got through the course of the week. Stay with us. We have certainly scaled our expectations down, and uh, but as I said, the reasons are due to commodity price decline, currency appreciation against euro, etc., which I don't think are long-term worries. I think the three-year outlook on both the market and earnings are good. Uh, the immediate outlook on earnings have been bad since October, and I think that trend is likely to continue for at least a few more quarters. We simply can't see growth going from 7.4% to 8.1%. It sort of appears to be as some sort of fantasy to expect growth to from 7.4 to 8.1. My reckoning is growth this year, FI16, will be pretty much as the as same as the growth last year. But the challenge is a lot of companies have had assumed that this will be a better year than last year, and a lot of investors had assumed this will be a better year than last year. And that's where I think the challenge will come in. If you, as a uh, as a manufacturer, had loaded up on inventory or started building capacity in anticipation of better growth in 16, I think that's where the challenge is going to come through, and that will be a source of incremental credit quality stress. Thank <laughs> you.